especially because they've already made so many sacrifices for the sport and they have big dreams and they train so hard. Hey, I'm David Karasek, by the way, and what I spend most of my days is teaching young athletes how to be more relaxed and focused during competition. And I've worked with athletes at all levels from the 10 year old who goes to soccer practice twice a week, all the way to an Olympic champion. And I have good news. There is a surprisingly simple system to handle stress in high pressure moments that works really, really well for kids and teenagers. So if you have a child that's already working hard, but consistently underperforms when it counts the most, then I'm going to show you why that is and what they need to do instead. And I will not hold back. Cool. But first, if you want to get right into the meat and potatoes and see the entire system, you can head over to davidkarasek.com and schedule a free 20 minute mental performance assessment for you and your child so we can figure out what specifically needs to be addressed and what the fastest path forward would be. So the biggest mistake that athletes, coaches and parents make is that they take the wrong goals into competition. Now, what are the wrong goals? Mostly winning because winning is a byproduct of doing everything right. The problem is that when winning is the goal and the expectation in competition, we're setting the kids up to fail because they get uptight, they get distracted and they become afraid of making mistakes. But I get it because we grow up in a competitive environment where we get all the praise in the world when we win. And it's only natural then that we want to win really badly because we want the acknowledgement of others, right? And I remember when I was younger and actually that was still the case when I ended my career with 25, I mostly wanted to make my parents proud, right? And I would imagine that's the same for a lot of kids if they're really being, being honest. Now, I would never tell an athlete to not have goals because goals are absolutely critical. Why? Because goals, they give us something to work towards. They motivate us to train hard. But what a lot of kids and adults don't understand is that goals are training tools that get you to work hard in practice. And the biggest mistake that a kid can make is to take their goals and their expectations into competition when it counts. Because what happens is it creates this sense of urgency inside of them. It's like the, the mental battle that's going on inside of them where they go, oh, I have to, I need to, OMG, what if I don't? And that's what's going to set up a thinking pattern that I would describe as self-created pressure. And there's actually two ways how that comes out. And they're just different sides of the coin. The first one is, oh, I'll try really hard. I'll muscle everything, right? And the muscles then don't do what they're supposed to do because they're not relaxed. And then the other way how to come out, how it could come out is then, oh, I'll just play or race very cautiously because yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not courageous and I just play very tentatively because I'm afraid to make a mistake, a mistake, okay? And so goals are, tra are a training tool for practice because if they've done the work, if the kids have done the work in practice, it's already there, right? It's like if you've programmed the computer, what you wanna do when you get to the competition is you just wanna gently hit the print button. You don't have to beat up the computer. You don't want to be serious about this because serious shuts the kids down. And my sense is that the bigger the game we play, the more important it is and that's why I learned this in my very last year when I was 24 and a half years old. I wish I learned that with 14 because it's not going to go away, right? So could you imagine what it'd be like for, let's take an Olympic athlete to go to the Olympics and think to themselves, I have sweated and busted my ass and bled for 15 years for this particular moment. So I better not mess this up. What's that going to do to you? And of course, intuitively, you know the answer, but it's actually a mental mistake to take the outcome into competition. The time to think about the out outcome is during practice. That's why you work. That's why you're working hard today. Okay. If I want to swim a Swiss record, I'll think about it every single day in practice, but I don't bring it 
into competition. And so I've been struggling with this, as I said, for years. And I always felt like I should be further ahead by now. I was jealous of others and, and, and thought about quitting many, many times. Um, exactly because I made this mental mistake and because I wasn't able to recall all the training that I put in in the most important moments, which made me very sad. It made me very frustrated. And I thought there's something wrong with me. And something happened in my very last year at the University of Virginia. That was the Olympic year as well. I met a guy called Dr. Jim Bauman. What's special about Dr. Jim Bauman is that he was the sports psychologist of Michael Phelps. So he knew what he was talking about. And he explained to me the success ladder that I'll show you now. And I'll explain why the mental game is so important for kids. Okay. So if this is success up here, I understand that success is very individual. So we don't need to be the best in the world, but it's like making the regional team, making the national team. It's like whatever, right? Success. And there's a ladder that leads to success. And this ladder has three parts. It has your character or the child's character. Or in other words, how focused is the child? How disciplined is the child? Does it, is it a hard worker? You know, does it show up to practice? Does it eat right? Does it sleep enough? Okay. Can it restrain itself or herself, himself from playing video games and go to practice instead, right? So it's a character or the behavior. That's the left leg. The middle part is the child's skills. And by the way, this applies to adults as well in everything that we do. It's our skills. So how well do I move through the water? How well do I shoot the ball? Like you, how good is my conditioning and all that, right? The, the, the abilities, the physical abilities. And on the right side, we have the mental game. We have the mental game. And that is going on inside of us. And sometimes... It's easy to spot if somebody is not confident or if somebody is overly confident, it's easy to spot from the outside. But more often than not, what's going on here, the fears and the anxiousness that athletes experience, it's, it's kind of internal. Now, what you need to understand about the ladder to success is that the level of success that the child will have is going to depend on the lowest of these three. And what I see happen so often is that the kids and the coaches and the parents they focus so much on building their skills their physical abilities their endurance the conditioning right all the way to like a super good level all the way up here and they have the character to support that because they go to practice they're very disciplined they're very committed right they're like proud athletes but what's holding them back is their mental game because the mental game isn't developed because they never had the opportunity or just like it was a half-assed opportunity where you know the parents went on trying to help themselves and kind of go on google and it's like oh yeah you got to visualize and then it feels more like you know just some stupid routine that doesn't actually get the juices flowing for the child and they're like oh i tried it didn't work okay so the mental game isn't developed and then what happens what happens is it leads to very frustrating experiences because we put it, we're making all the sacrifices. We go to training all the time. We know we have the skills because we can do it in training, but then the pressure comes and we can just not show it. We're not reaping the rewards for all the hard work that we put in. And it's not fun. You know, if, if an athlete, like think about a teenager, they put so much time and you put money in it and also time you're driving them around and all that. And there's no rewards. It's not fun. It's disappointing. It's frustrating. And if they're not having fun, sooner or later, they're going to go and do something else. Right? And then that would make me very sad. And I think it would make you sad as well because they miss an opportunity to learn about life. Because in life, again, this is, this is the same thing. What happens in life is that more often than not, why do you think athletes are so popular in the corporate world. It's because they have the character to be consistent and disciplined. They have the mental game to handle pressure and they might have not any skills because they've never worked, but they know, the people know that if they have the character and they have the mental game, that they can build these skills really, really quickly. It's a lot easier to build the skills than to build the character. 
It's a lot easier to build skills than building the mental game. Right? Actually, I take that back because the mental game is actually, you know, if you're doing if you're doing it right, if you do if you do it with, with, with the system that I'm talking about here, then it's actually really fast because I'll tell you my story because I remember it like it was yesterday. So I struggled with this for 14 years of my career. And in my last year, I went to see Dr. Jim Bauman and uh, lots of objections that I had. Oh, it's another thing that I need to do. And some people will call me crazy and mentally weak for going to have to see a sports psychologist. But I didn't care at that point because I just wanted, I knew it was the Olympic year. Um, it was my last chance and um, I want a different result at this point. So I went to see him and he explained me this. And what we identified is the, the number one thing I needed to learn because, again, I had the character, I had the skills already, but I didn't have the mental game was to just be relaxed in high pressure situations. And we used exactly what I was talking about, I not focus on winning. Right. And when I started doing that, literally like the, the first first competition already that wasn't that important yet but i i swam a, like a best time and then the whole year it just continued to get better and better and better and ultimately it allowed me to qualify for the olympics unexpectedly because i improved so much because literally what it did is i had this level of character i had this level of skill and it unlocked because it's dependent on the lowest that shot up and now all of a sudden i was here instead of down here all right that's literally what happened just by learning about those mental mistakes that kept me back. And so I qualified for the Olympics and then I went to the Olympics. It was August 1st, Swiss National Day. I had this race that I trained for for 15 years and I managed to swim a Swiss record in the most important race of my life, right? I wasn't the fastest in the world because Michael Phelps won my event but I was very happy because finally I could recall all the training that I put in and I knew on that day when it counted the most, I was the best version of myself. And that left an impression on me and a memory that nobody can take away from me, right? And so as you can see, most parents and their, athlete, their, their children athletes, they have a wrong idea on how they're going to unlock that next level. What they should actually be doing is a little bit of that mental work instead of just focusing on building more physical skills and running into the risk of the, the teenager burning out. And so I want you to go try that now and let me know how it works for you. And of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to see the entire system broken down step by step, then you can head over to davidkarasek.com and schedule a 20 minute chat with me. Calendly will just ask you for your name and your email and you'll able to be be able to pick a time that works best for you. And if you thought that this was useful, please share it or tag another parent friend. Bye for now.